Welcome to Sleepy Voyages. The Roaring Twenties. A decade that shimmered with light, energy, and the promise of dreams waiting to be realized. The air was thick with chain. Radios hummed to life with the captivating rhythms of jazz. This music, a wild, unrestrained symphony of life, invited souls to dance, lose inhibitions, and immerse themselves in the moment. In city streets, you'd see the flapper girls. These were the daring women of the twenties, wearing dresses that glinted under the city lights. Each sequin so onto their dresses seemed to capture a fragment of their spirit, vivacious, defiant, and sparkling. Yet, this was also the era of prohibition. Beneath the glow of street lights, in dimly lit back alleys, clandestine meetings occurred, hushed whispers traded secrets about where one might find the next hidden doors in unsuspecting places opened to rooms buzzing with activity people were chasing thrills constantly seeking the next pie the next dance the next fleeting moment of euphoria, but in their quest for happiness, they often found themselves swaying between the realms of illusion and reality. It was a time when the external world gleamed with possibilities, but internal worlds were often shrouded in confusion and longing. In this effervescent backdrop of the Roaring Twenties, we find our story. Before we tuck you in, tonight, Voyages of the Night Sky, we have a small but crucial request. As your eyelids grow heavy, and the soothing tones of sleepy voyages guide you to the realm of dreams. Remember the peace, serenity, and comfort that we bring to you every night, just as a lighthouse guides lost ships. In the darkness, your reviews help other restless dreamers find their way to us. By leaving a review and sharing your thoughts on your experience, you are reaching out to other insomniacs lost in the night, guiding them towards restful sleep. Take a moment before you drift away to click on the leave a review button on your podcast app. Help us extend our galaxy of tranquility to all those who seek the solace of sound sleep. And once you've done that, feel free to slip back under the covers of our sleep stories, ready to be whisked away on another sleepy voyage. Remember, your stars light the way for others. Every review, every rating helps us create a bigger, more beautiful universe of peace and rest. The American Dream, it's a term that resonates deeply within the fabric of American society, woven through 
its literature, history, and ethos. At its core, it's a promise. A promise of upward mobility, of prosperity, and of a better life, achieved through hard work, determination, and a sprinkle of luck. But like all dreams, it has its shades. It can shimmer with hope, yet be marred by delusion. Enter the world of J. Gatsby. Gatsby isn't just a man. He's an embodiment, an epitome of this very dream. Born as James Gats, a poor young boy on the shores of Lake Superior, he was someone who dared to dream big. His life was far from an odyssey of straight roads. It was rather a winding path, with its twists, turns, and detours, all leading to a singular, shining goal, success. For many, the mansion, the parties, and the fame would seem like the pinnacle of success. Yet, for Gatsby, these were but means to an end. They were stepping stones, parts of a larger puzzle, and this puzzle was deeply personal, interwoven with passion, love, and a longing for something or someone lost in the annals of time, but the question remains, is the American dream a beacon of hope or an illusion masking a harsher reality? Imagine a time where prosperity seemed endless and the shimmer of the newly acquired wealth was visible in every corner of the town. West Egg, unlike its more refined counterpart, East Egg was a place of new wealth where fortunes were freshly minted and showcased with a certain audacity. Homes here weren't just houses, they were statements. They declared to the world the success of their owners and none did this more boldly than J. Gatsby's mansion. Perched by the water, this colossal structure was a beacon of opulence. Its yellow brick gave it a golden hue, making it gleam under the sun by day and shimmer beneath the moonlit sky by night. Luscious green gardens surrounded the mansion. Almost as if nature itself was trying to pay homage to the grandeur of the edifice, balconies protruded at every feasible corner, offering views of the bay where the calm waters reflected the mansion's glory back to itself. Intricate designs adorned its facade, and tall columns stood guard at its entrance. Reminiscent of ancient Greek temples, adding an air of timelessness to its modern allure. Every evening, the mansion lit up, not just with lights, but with light. The laughter, the chatter, the clinking of glasses, it was as if the mansion itself was celebrating its own existence. It wasn't just a house. It was a monument, a testament to ambition, to dreams, and to the heights. One could reach in the pursuit of the American dream. Yet, for all its grandiosity, there was an air of mystery that enveloped the mansion. It held secrets, stories, and tales that were waiting to be unraveled. 
and as the sun would set, casting a golden hue over West Egg, the mansion would stand there silently watching, waiting and whispering tales of dreams both achieved and shattered on the north shore of Long Island was a haven. It was here, amidst the glamour and extravagance of newfound fortunes, that Nick Carraway found himself renting a small house while the grandiosity of mansions and opulent estates surrounded him. Nick's residence stood out with its unassuming charm, a house not of sheer size or opulence, but one that held its own quiet dignity, nestled between grand homes. It was like a guardian watching over the realm, observing the dance of desires and dreams. Carraway, much like his house, was an observer, a man with Midwestern values, now thrust into a world of excess. A recent Yale graduate, he sought a life in the bond business, moving to New York in pursuit of his own dreams. Intriguingly, Nick's to Nick's relatively modest abode stood the mysterious Gatsby's mansion. While they seemed worlds apart, their proximity would soon intertwine their destinies. Carraway, though initially an outsider, would become our window into the heart of West Egg, its opulence and its underlying currents. Through his eyes, we would witness the allure, the passion, and the fragility of the dreams that inhabited this world. A story of ambition and yearning awaited, and Nick Carraway would be our beacon through it all. Imagine the sprawling lawns, manicured to perfection, now fill with the who of New York society. Elegant women in sparkling dresses twirl in dance, their laughter light and carefree, mingling with the rich undertones of men's conversations. A kaleidoscope of colors adorned the scene, dresses in shades of emerald, ruby, sapphire, and topaz, reflected the ambient lights casting hypnotic reflections around the gardens and on the mansion walls. At the center of this spectacle was the tantalizing food beckoning the guests with a myriad of aromas. Tables groaned under the weight of delectable dishes, succulent roasts, fresh seafood, delicate pastries, and chocolates of every imaginable kind. Crystal flutes sparkled, filled to the brim with bubbling champagne, but beyond the visible opulence was the soul stirring rhythm. From the heart of the mansion, music flowed like a river. It wasn't just any music, but the seductive and invigorating beats of jazz. The saxophones cried out with passion, the trumpets belted melodies of joy, and the pianos, oh, the pianos, played with such fervor that every note seemed to pull at the heartstrings. Dancers moved with grace and energy 
losing themselves in the rhythm. Their feet tapped, their bodies swayed, and their spirits soared, elevating the atmosphere to a realm of pure euphoria. This was a world of enchantment, an oasis where the worries of the world faded and joy reigned supreme. Place where dreams felt tangible. And for a few fleeting hours, anything seemed possible. Such were the parties at Gatsby's mansion, unparalleled, unforgettable, and filled with a magic that was uniquely its own within the walls of Gatsby's grand mansion. Murmurs spread like wildfire among the crowd. Whispers floated from corner to corner. Every individual, it seemed, held a different piece of Gatsby's past each more fascinating and enigmatic than the last. One rumor painted him as a brave war hero, a soldier who fought valiantly and returned with tales that could fill volumes. Yet, another voice in the crowds suggested he was a mysterious spy weaving tales of espionage, secret meetings in dimly lit corners, and coded messages passed in plain sight. Further into the evening, a group might huddle and exchange stories of Gatsby as a treacherous criminal, running underground operations during the time of prohibition. But then, a soft-spoken individual might lean in and insist Gatsby was a nobleman from a far-off land, a prince who left behind his title for the allure of the American shores. Amid these captivating tales, there were those who simply believed he was an entrepreneur, a man who had made his money through legitimate means, albeit in a swift and astonishing manner. However, the true essence of Gatsby remained a mystery, a shrouded figure obscured by layers of tales, truths, and embellishments. With every party he hosted, the aura of intrigue around him only seemed to intensify, drawing in guests, not just for the promise of a grand evening, but for the allure of the enigma that was J. Gatsby. Each rumor, whether grounded in fact or birthed from pure imagination, added to the tapestry of Gatsby's life, making him the most talked about figure in West Egg, if not all of New York. And while the man himself occasionally appeared amidst the revelry, his eyes always distant, his demeanor always composed, he never confirmed nor denied any of these tales. It was as though he enjoyed the stories the myriad versions of his own life dancing around him, ever elusive, ever intriguing. For the guests, the truth hardly mattered. The allure lay in the uncertainty, in the myriad possibilities of who Gatsby really was, the mystery of Gatsby's past wasn't just a topic of idle gossip. It became a reflection of the time's spirit, 
a society fascinated by the idea that anyone could reinvent themselves given the right circumstances. Just as the American dream promised a fresh start, a chance to build oneself from the ground up, Gatsby, whether intentionally or not, became its living embodiment, forever keeping people guessing about his origins. The lesson, perhaps, is that in the quest for the American dream, the journey and the stories we weave can sometimes overshadow the destination or even the truth. In the end, it's the narrative, the myth, and the dream itself that captivates, making us wonder if the pursuit of the dream isn't the dream itself. Behind the persona of J. Gatsby lies the story of James Gatz, born to impoverished farmers in North Dakota. James Gatz was a young man with ambitions that soared higher than the vast plains of his hometown. He had dreams, not of mere success, but of a life that gleamed brighter than the brightest star. In his youth, Gatz worked on the shores of Lake Superior as a clam digger and a salmon but even as he toiled in the mud and muck, Gatz was always on the lookout for a chance to rise, to transform. That chance came in the form of Dan Cody, a copper magnate and millionaire, when Gatz warned him of an impending storm. Cody took young Gotts under his wing, and the latter became his personal assistant. This association with Cody was the turning point in Gotts's life. It was through Cody that James Gatz tasted luxury, wealth, and the world of the elite. He traveled with Cody on his lavish yacht, living a life of extravagance and witnessing firsthand the power of wealth. But even more importantly, it was during these years that the idea of Jay Gatsby began to take form. Cody's lifestyle, his grandeur, and his ways became the foundation upon which Gatsby built his dreams. Yet, with Cody's passing, Gatsby learned a bitter lesson about the transient nature of wealth and its allure. He inherited a sum of money from Cody, but due to legal complications, he never received it. But Gatsby was not one to be deterred. He was determined to recreate himself, to become a figure of elegance, mystery, and charm. By the time we meet him in the story, Jay Gatsby has metamorphosed from James Gat, the farmer's son, into a millionaire known for his opulent parties and mysterious aura. His past is a guarded secret, and his life an enigma, a tapestry woven with threads of dreams, ambitions, and a relentless pursuit of an ideal. Gatsby's transformation from Gats was not merely a change in name, it was the manifestation of the American dream, 
the belief that anyone, regardless of their origins, could reinvent themselves. Yet, underneath the shimmering facade of J. Gatsby, the heartbeats of James Gatz persisted, always yearning, always dreaming. Daisy Buchanan's presence in the tapestry of our tale is undeniable, like a luminous glow that both enchants and perplexes. Her beauty is ethereal, an allure that captivates those around her. Think of the soft shimmer of a pearl or the gentle curve of a porcelain vase. This is Daisy's elegance. It's a beauty that seems almost otherworldly, leaving an indelible mark on the beholder. Yet, beneath this facade of beauty lies a world of melancholy, a world where joy and sadness dance in tandem. It's the kind of sorrow born from dreams, once vibrant but now faded, from promises whispered but never kept. In many ways, Daisy becomes a symbol of the American dream itself, dazzling from afar, but up close, complex, and at times disillusioning. And this brings us to her conflict, the tug of war within her heart. Daisy is torn between two worlds, one of comfort, security, and societal expectations, the other of passion, past love, and what could have been the duality of her life mirrors the conflict. Many face the pursuit of an ideal versus the realities that anchor us. Through Daisy, we are reminded of the fragility of dreams, the cost of choices, and the complexities of the human heart. It's a journey through beauty, melancholy, and conflict. Tom Buchanan stands tall and imposing, a figure that cannot easily be ignored. Tom is the embodiment of old money. The grandeur and privilege he enjoys are inherited, a legacy passed down through generations, not earned through sweat and hard work. Yale educated and a polo player, Tom exudes an aura of superiority, rooted not in achievement, but in birthright. Yet, it's essential to understand that this position of inherited status comes with its own set of burdens, the weight of maintaining the family name and the expectations it carries is no light load. His physical prowess mirrors his societal stature. Tom is described as having a cruel body, strong. This physical dominance mirrors his forceful personality, one that often tilts towards aggression. He's not one to shy away from asserting his beliefs, no matter how prejudiced or outdated they might appear to the modern observer. However, what truly makes Tom intriguing is the dichotomy of his character. On one hand, he is unfaithful to Daisy, engaging in a not so secret affair with Myrtle Wilson. 
On the other hand, he is deeply territorial about his marriage, ensuring that no one, not even Gatsby, with all his newfound wealth, can threaten his claim over Daisy. Ton's wealth is one of parties, luxury, and endless leisure. But it's also a world built on a shaky foundation. It's a world where material possessions are abundant, but genuine connections and emotional depth are scarce. While he might appear to be a villain at times, especially when juxtaposed against Gatsby's tragic hero, it's essential to remember that Tom too is a product of his environment. A product of a society that often values birthright over carrots as we dive into the intricacies of Tom Buchanan's character. Remember that he serves as a lens through which we can view the broader societal norms of the 1920s. He is a living testament to the old guard struggling to maintain relevance in a rapidly changing world. And so in Tom, we see the harsh realities of the American dream, where privilege often blinds, where force often overpowers reason, and where the illusion of happiness can be as hollow as the reality it masks. Jordan Baker emerges in the narrative as an embodiment of the modern woman of the 1920s. She's not just a professional golfer, but also a symbol of the new, more liberal age. While many women of the era were beginning to find their voice and place in society, Jordan stood out with her stark cynicism. Remember, this was a time of change, and Jordan was at the forefront. Her sharp wit and often cold demeanor is a stark contrast to Daisy's seemingly delicate nature. But don't mistake this for heartlessness. It's a protective shield, a facade she's built over the years. This armor is a byproduct of her understanding of the world's harsh realities. Jordan doesn't believe in mincing words or living in the illusion of propriety. For her, life is not about pretending. Yet, beneath her steely exterior, there's a vulnerability. This vulnerability doesn't make her weak. It makes her human. She has her secrets, like her cheating scandal in Gol. It showcases that even those who appear the most controlled, and isn't that a reflection of life itself? No one is perfect. Everyone has their moments of doubt and missteps. In her relationship with Nick, we see another facet of Jordan's character. She's not looking for a fairy tale. She's looking for an equal. Her modern views on relationships and love highlight the changing dynamics of romance. In the 1920s, through Jordan, we're reminded that it's okay to challenge the norms, that true freedom comes not just from the choices we make, but also from understanding and accepting our imperfections. In a world of illusions, Jordan Baker is a breath of candid reality. The Roaring Twenties were a time of unprecedented change. But 
the universal tale of young love remains a constant through the ages. It was in the charming southern city of Louisville that a young Jay Gatsby, then known as James Gats, first encountered the radiant Daisy Fay. Picture a world where horse-drawn carriages still roll on cobblestone streets and southern mansions, with their sprawling verandas, witnessed stories of love and heartbreak. Daisy, with her golden voice and an aura that seemed to make the world gravitate towards her, was the bell of every ball. The young men of Louisville were enchanted by her, but it was the penniless soldier, James Gatz, who captured her heart. Their meetings were often clandestine, hidden from the prying eyes of society. A stolen moment under a blooming magnolia tree, whispers shared during moonlit dances or fleeting glances exchanged across crowded rooms. Their bond was profound, fuel by dreams and young passion. But as with many young romances, reality began to intrude. The specter of war loomed large, calling young men, including Gatsby, to distant shores. Promises were exchanged, with Gatsby vowing to return. However, time has a way of shifting sands beneath our feet. While Gatsby faced the brutalities of war, the golden girl with starry dreams remained an indelible mark on Gatsby's heart. Even as years passed and circumstances changed, the flame of that first love continued to burn brightly, guiding Gatsby's choices and shaping his destiny for love, especially a first love, leaves an imprint that time often struggles to erase. Across the bay in East Egg stands a house where Daisy, the object of Gatsby's affection resides every evening. A mysterious green light blinks softly at the end of her dock. For Gatsby, this light becomes an enduring symbol, a beacon calling him closer to his unattainable dream. Each night, he stands at the edge of his property, reaching out towards it, hoping, yearning. The luminescent glow is more than just a physical entity. It embodies his desires, his hopes, and the dreams that have eluded him. The green light represents the elusive nature of the American dream always shimmering in the distance, seemingly within grasp yet perpetually out of reach. It's an emblem of everything Gatsby has ever wanted. Success, acceptance, and most importantly, Daisy's love. Yet, the distance between his dock and the light speaks volumes. No matter how close it seems, some dreams remain just beyond our reach. For in his pursuit, Gatsby doesn't merely chase a light. He chases a dream intertwined with memories of a past love, a vision of a perfect future and the tantalizing promise of happiness. 
but Valley of Ashes stands in stark contrast to the affluence and glamour of West and East Egg. It's a desolate expanse of land where the ashes from the city's industries fall and form grey mounds that stretch endlessly. The air is thick, laden with soot, and it casts a muted pallor over everything. At the centre of this wasteland lies a dimly lit garage, its sign barely visible through the small. George B. Wilson, the proprietor of this modest establishment, is a spiritless man, worn down by the harsh environment and the weight of his dreams never realized. He is not a man of wealth or connections, but one bound to the grimy underbelly of the 1920s American economy. Beside him, often lost in the shadows of his garage, stands Myrtle, his wife. Myrtle has her own dream, aspirations that reach beyond the soot and grime of the valley. She yearns for the glitz and glam of the life she sees from afar, a life she believes she deserves. Yet, here in the valley, she remains. Her fiery passion and desire for more standing out against the bleak backdrop, but life has its ways of introducing chaos into the mundanity. Tom Buchanan, the epitome of wealth and privilege, enters their lives with a proposition. Myrtle sees in Tom an escape, a ticket out of the grey desolation. The two embark on an, an illicit affair, hidden from the prying eyes of society, yet clear as day in the confined space of the valley. It's a relationship built on fragile foundations, a dangerous dance where love, lust, and ambition entwine. Their clandestine meetings bring a temporary spark to Myrtle's life. A fleeting taste of the world beyond the ashes, yet they also underscore the vast chasm between dreams and reality. For Tom, Myrtle is but an exciting diversion from his life of luxury. For Myrtle, Tom represents hope, a promise of a brighter future even if built on deception. As the days pass, the lines between illusion and reality blur, setting the stage for events that will change their lives forever. Yet in this web of desire and deceit, there's Daisy, Tom's wife. While outwardly radiant, Daisy's spirit is shadowed by a profound melancholy. The weight of Tom's infidelities hasn't escaped her, pressing down on her like a heavy cloud. Her heart, once carefree and light, now carries the burden of her husband's indiscretions. Though she's aware of Tom's liaisons, Daisy remains torn, a complex tapestry of emotions, pride, love, and insecurity. The contrasting lives 
of these women, Myrtle and Daisy, present a vivid tableau of the era's complex social landscape, where dreams and reality often blur, leaving many in the dance of ambition and societal constraints. Both seek their own version of the American dream, though its promises remain elusive. The air inside Nick's residence was thick with anticipation. One could almost feel the weight of the past hanging in the room, intertwining with the scent of fresh flowers, meticulously arranged in vases, their petals soft and inviting. Gatsby, usually the epitome of poise, was noticeably nervous, fidgeting with his tie, repeatedly checking the clock, his intense blue eyes darting toward the door every few minutes. Outside, rain pattered softly on the windows, as if nature itself was setting a dramatic backdrop. Its rhythm a gentle reminder of times long gone. When Daisy finally arrived, a charged silence filled the space. Their eyes met, and for a brief moment, the world seemed to pause. Gatsby's face lit up, revealing a vulnerable joy that he'd kept hidden for years. Daisy, however, looked more reserved, her expressive eyes hinting at a myriad of emotions. Surprise, trepidation, but also a touch of nostalgia. They began with small talk, reminiscing about the youthful days spent in Louisville, the whisper of promises beneath sycamore trees, and lazy afternoons by the riverbank. However, beneath their words lay an underlying current of raw emotion an unspoken acknowledgement of the profound impact they had on each other's lives. By the time the clock chimed its hourly song, Gatsby and Daisy had reconnected, not as mere acquaintances, but as two souls who had once been deeply, irrevocably intertwined. The room, though silent, was electric with memories of a time gone by, of stolen glances and whispered promises. They were two souls, once deeply intertwined, now cautiously circling the waters of the past. Gatsby recounted tales of distant lands and brave ventures, each story subtly infused with his undying hope to one day be reunited with his lost love. Daisy listened intently, her eyes glistening with a mix of admiration and sorrow, her hand occasionally reaching up to touch the string of pearls around her neck. The pearls, a symbol of the life she had chosen, seemed in that moment to be both a shield and a shackle. As the afternoon sun began its descent, painting the room in hues of gold and amber, the two lost souls gravitated closer a sense of understanding of shared dreams and unspoken regrets enveloped them and in that quiet room amidst the soft rustling of leaves and distant murmurs of the city Daisy and Gatsby's affections for one another 
began to rekindle, burning brighter with every passing second. Their hands met, fingers intertwining, as they embarked on a journey back in time to the days of unbridled passion and youthful hope. In this moment, reality and illusion danced together, offering a glimpse into the complex tapestry of love, choices, and the inexorable march of time. The summer sun blazed overhead as the group decided to venture into New York City. It was an attempt to escape the simmering tension that had begun to brew in East Egg. But the city's heat only magnified the undercurrents of unrest. Gatsby, Daisy, Tom, Jordan, and Nick found themselves in the luxurious suite of the Plaza Hotel, a haven for New York's elite. The room, as vast and grand as it was, seemed to tighten around them, the walls closing in with every passing second. Tom, always suspicious, began to challenge Gatsby about his intentions with Daisy. Gatsby, usually the epitome of grace and composure, found himself drawn into a confrontation, defending not just his love for Daisy, but his very identity. Daisy Watt, torn between her past and present, between the allure of a love once lost and the security of her present life. It was in this charged atmosphere that secrets began to spill, like water from a broken dam. Daisy's voice, often described as full of money, trembled with emotion, revealing the depth of her feelings for both Tom and Gatsby. The air grew dense with accusations and revelations as the bonds of trust began to unravel. Every word, every glance held weight. A culmination of years, of hidden emotions, secrets, and desires, and as the day drew to a close, they all left the plaza, forever changed, with the city skyline bearing silent witness to their transformations. The radiant sun began its descent, casting elongated shadows on the roadway. Daisy, behind the wheel of Gatsby's gleaming yellow car felt the weight of the world pressing down on her. Myrtle, George Wilson's wife, saw the bright car approaching, her heart full of expectation, misinterpreted the vehicle's approach as Tom coming to see her with anticipation and a mix of desperation, she dashed towards the road in a blur of motion and emotion. The car struck Myrtle, leaving her lifeless on the dusty pavement. The world seemed to freeze for a moment, the only sound being the distant hum of the city and the throbbing of shocked hearts. Gatsby the man of grand parties and immense wealth found himself in a predicament that no amount of money could resolve. His cherished car, now an instrument of tragedy, 
was driven by Daisy, the love he had waited for all these years, torn between love and morality. Gatsby was faced with a choice. Instead of revealing the truth that Daisy was driving, he decided to bear the burden of the blame. This choice, made in a fleeting moment, stemmed from his boundless love for Daisy. For Gatsby, this choice would be one that would redefine his life and legacy. In the shadow of New York's towering skyscrapers and amidst its bustling streets, George Wilson was plunged into unimaginable grief. Myrtle, his passionate and vibrant wife, met an untimely demise, leaving George devastated and broken. Driven by his sorrow and a desperate need for answers, George began a relentless quest for the person responsible for his wife's tragic accident. Each lead, every whisper in the community, pointed him towards one direction, one symbol of affluence and opulence the yellow car. Yet, as George navigated this trail, he was misled by the opulence that surrounded the true perpetrator. The mansion that once shimmered with jubilant celebrations now stood somber, casting long, eerie shadows under the moonlit sky. Despite the rumors, the parties, and the aura of success, the mansion and its occupant were surrounded by an impenetrable loneliness. Gatsby's end was as mysterious as his life had been. The majestic house which once teemed with life, was now a haunting monument to a dream unfulfilled. Echoing the fragility of ambition and the transient nature of fame, such was the enigma of J. Gatsby, a man who touched many lives, but was truly known by very few. The Roaring Twenties in New York was not just a time of extravagance and parties. It was also an era of shifting values, dreams, and disillusionments. Nick Carraway, our guide through this tumultuous era, began to see through the sparkling facade of the East Egg and the social circles he had become a part of once a hopeful newcomer, he was now questioning the very foundations of his relationships and the glittering world that surrounded him as days turned into nights. The mysterious aura that once held Nick captive began to fade. Behind every luxurious party he saw the emptiness, the hollow aspirations, and the distorted reality. The image of Gatsby, standing alone with his outstretched arms towards the green light, became symbolic of the unattainable nature of dreams in the face of reality. Gatsby's tragic end was not just a personal loss for Nick, but a piercing revelation about the very world he inhabited. Despite the grandeur, the East had become a place of shattered dreams, betrayals, and 
unfulfilled promises. It wasn't just about Gatsby's unreciprocated love, Daisy's torn loyalties. It was about the fundamental human condition of always wanting more and never being content. Gatsby's funeral was a quiet affair, a stark contrast to the opulent parties he had thrown. The vast mansion, once alive with music and laughter, stood in desolate silence, a testament to the fleeting nature of wealth and fame. Very few mourned the death of Jay Gatsby, a man who had touched many lives, but had truly been known by none. Nick, unable to bear the weight of his experiences, decided to depart from the East, leaving behind the ghosts of memories, the tumultuous relationships and the broken dreams. Imagine drifting on a small boat on the tranquil bay. The sky is vast, painted in hues of twilight, with the first beginning to twinkle. The water beneath is calm, gently reflecting the canopy of the sky above. Each ripple on the water's surface appears as if it's being painted by the brushstrokes of the wind. Feel the cool breeze on your face, carrying the scents of the sea. Listen to the soft splash of the water against the boat's sides. A gentle, rhythmic lullaby sung by nature itself. With every breath, absorb the peace of the moment letting the serenity seep into every pore of your being. The bay cradles you, making you feel light and weightless, like you're floating in a vast expanse of dreams. Just be present in this moment. With the water, the stars, and the gentle embrace of the night. Allow this feeling of serenity to envelop you, guiding you into a realm of deep, rejuvenating sleep. Tonight, you're not chasing dreams. They're coming to you, tender and inviting, welcoming you into a world of restful slumber. Good night.